Tell me the difference between a Cobra and an Apache. Hand me that. Yeah. This. And this. And let me show this here in a second. So yeah, so this is the Cobra helicopter. It's skinny, it's uh, two blades, single engine, the Army version, and this is the Apache. And this was pretty much the latest version, uh, the longbow with the radar on top, the big donut on top and such. So we'll go back here to the Cobra. The Cobra was basically derived from the Huey helicopter from Vietnam. They re the Army realized they needed an armed escort helicopter uh, taking the troops in by the Huey. There was a troop transport. So they went, I say, I wouldn't say cheap, they just went really quick. So it has the same transmission engine, um, tail rotor drive system as the Huey. So that's, you know, parts and all that sort of stuff is readily available and such. They just made it now a pilot in the back, and you can fly from both seats, a pilot in the back, and then a pilot in the front. But the guy in the front mainly runs the, um, the weapon systems. And so it fires, well, the Mod S Cobra, which is what this one is, and this is the one also that I flew, it has a 40 millimeter grenade launcher and it has a uh, 7.62 uh, six barrel Gatling gun. And then it's got uh, tow anti-tank missiles. And then it's got the um, rocket pod to carry a bunch of different types of rockets and such. Um, great helicopter for its time. Um, the enemy, the Vietnamese, feared it, uh, rightfully so. I mean, when it's coming straight at you, it's a very slim target. And if it's coming right at you, yeah, it's you're on the receiving end of everything that's coming at you. So that's usually the last thing. You remember those uh, old stickers they would sit there and say, you can try running, you'll just die tired. Yeah, sort of stuff. That came from the Cobra and such. Um, one of the really um, great things about the Cobra, I said, the 40 millimeter grenade launcher. So it fires a high explosive uh, 40 millimeter grenades. Um, man, I want to say about probably around two or 300 rounds per minute. And then, the, like I said, the minigun, uh, it had several different rates, but up to 6,000 rounds per minute. It could shoot the 7.62 rounds and such. Um, so when I had finished flight school, well, actually in flight school, um, we were doing diving fire. And, uh, and in flight school, we had the one, it didn't have the chunker, the 40 millimeter grenade launcher or that 7.62 gun. It had one three barreled 20 millimeter gun. And uh, it also fired about 3000 rounds a minute. But um, a 20 millimeter shell, uh, it would slow the helicopter down. As you're coming in diving fire, say at 120 knots, by the time you were shooting that 20 millimeter gun and started rolling out, you were down to maybe 90 knots, 95 knots. I mean, you would, yeah, you would feel it pulling you on the, on the seat belt, um, the recoil from that gun and such. And even on, uh, with the 20 millimeter, that was the other good thing about the Cobra is that wherever you look, the turret would move and you could shoot to the left or the right if you're flying forward. You know, that one back then was very uh, ingenious. It had two rails on the top inside of the cockpit and on those rails, there were two rods that hooked to the top of your helmet. Uh, and so as you moved your helmet, those two rods would move on resolvers and it would tell the gun pretty much, okay, he's looking to the left. I'm going to move the turret to the left. You know, it got much better with the Apache. But uh, the great thing about that was the gun on the 20 millimeter, if we're sitting there at a hover and shooting, uh, it would move the helicopter backwards. It, it would, you would have to move the stick forward because if you didn't, as you're shooting forward, it would start drifting backwards. So, yeah, so you just sit there hovering and shooting and you know, until you stopped. Um, my really good story on that was when I got back from uh, flight school, uh, we had the Mod S Cobras there at, uh, and we went to Fort Chaffee, Arkansas for the su summer camp. And I was like, wow, man, we're actually gonna get to shoot this and everything. And uh, um, so I'm sitting there in the front seat, brand new W1, brand new warrant officer. And my back seater, I think he was a W3 and, uh, he goes, all right, so when we get up here, we're going to be sitting at a hover 
and we're gonna be shooting these connexes about a mile away and all. He goes, all right, so go ahead. And with the Cobra, you would look down in an eyepiece in the front seat, and then you have this steel rod sticking up. It doesn't move. It's kind of like the F-16 uh, joystick. It's pressure. And so uh, you look through the uh, sight, and with your other hand, you could sit there and move the, um, the sight with your thumb. No, that's right. You move it with your uh, with the joystick and put the crosshairs on the target and shoot. And so at you know, three 6,000 rounds per minute, I mean, just like, I pull it and it's like, oh yeah. And he goes like, hey, don't get scared when you pull the trigger because when you, when you pull it, keep it down for a little bit because uh, if you pull it, get scared and let it go, it'll jam the gun. And you don't want to do that. So uh, you get, because once the, the motors get rolling and everything, start feeding the, the rounds in, if you do it real quick, start and stop it, it'll jam up the gun. So like, oh wow, okay, cool. And I remember that from fine, uh, firing the M60 machine gun, you know, you, you've got to do at least a, you know, seven, 10 round burst or it would jam also. So I'm like, all right, no problem. So, and it was like, man, it was like Ghostbusters because uh, every other round was a tracer. And I mean, it's like a laser beam out there in the daytime. I'm like, wow, this is cool. And you can feel the buzzing inside the helicopter from the, the minigun. Uh, you're firing away. And I was like, oh, dude, this is like wow, way cool. And he's like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's shoot the chunker now. The 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Like, oh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. You switch it over to the chunker. I'm like, all right. So I remember, don't get scared, you know, and uh, and pull it. So I'm like, you know, do, 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 do. And then I'm here, I hear that, you know, the chunker, the dunk, 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 dunk. And I'm like, and he's like, whoa, 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 hold. And I'm like, because I couldn't see anything on the connexes. And I look up, I'm like, is a cloud of all these uh, grenades headed that way. And he's like, whoa. He goes like, most guys like to save their rounds. And I shoot them all at once. I'm like, oh, shoot. And so, man, for the next 30 seconds, there's just explosions all out there. And I was like, well, okay, well, there you go. And he's like, yeah. So he finished up on that. That was like way, way cool <laughs> uh, doing that. So that was the end. then what about six months later, uh, ended up uh, getting sent to the Army to the Apache course. And uh, yeah, that was pretty... Um, what way quicker than I thought? I thought you'd have to have thousands of hours flying, you know, the Cobra before in rank, you know, work your way up in rank before you'd ever get, you know, let loose on an Apache. And I know here I was as a now a W two, uh, going back to Fort Rucker for, oof, for uh, four months or oh, five months was that course, and so the Apache, we learned a lot. From, uh, from the Cobra and fixed in the Apache. And, and I say this because now it's got two engines, um, it's still front and back seat, um, but now it uses infrared uh, FLIR uh, for night vision system. And uh, whereas the Cobra, we used night vision goggles. It didn't have, uh, well, they eventually ended up having C-Night, but um, it had no FLIR, built-in FLIR system. You had to wear goggles and all that. Uh, that's why it had tracer rounds where the Apache doesn't because if you're shooting tracers, the enemy knows, oh, there he is. That's where he's shooting from. So the Apache doesn't need that because FLIR doesn't use, um, doesn't use um, night vision amplification to see. And it uses, uses heat. And uh, so you don't need tracers to see your bullets and such. And uh, so the fire control radar was much, much better. Um, or it came after uh, with the longbow fire control radar. And that's a millimeter wave radar. That's to fire the newer um, Lima model uh, laser guided, uh, not laser, um, uh, radar guided missiles. And then, um, and then it had the new Hellfire missiles that we fired, laser guided. And so kind of like the Cobra, but more improved with the Apache, the front seat could control the laser. And it's kind of like uh, deer hunting in Texas. You put that spotlight on that deer and that, poof, that's where you're gonna shoot, right? So with the laser and the laser guided hellfires, you have to put the laser on the target, on the tank, so to speak, and fire the missile and keep the laser on the target until it impacts. Now, you could have special forces guys on the ground with uh, GLIDs, you know, uh, ground-based laser designators, and they could you know, be 
quite a few miles ahead of you on the other side of a, a hill or whatever, and I'm going to shoot this Hellfire missile over this hill. I'll never see the target uh, over the radio. He told me, like, this heading, this distance, uh, the target is in probably these coordinates, and we'll put them in. And that way, the fire control computer says, like, okay, brings this in our uh, helmet display unit, uh, our heads up display. It'll say, yeah, get this box uh, from being dashed to solid. Once you got it solid, you're in constraints. Now you shoot the missile, you tell the guy on the ground, hey, we, uh, you know, shots out. And he goes, okay. And I already told him the time, you know, to uh, delay on the laser. And that way it goes over him so it doesn't hit him. Because uh, so once the laser missile goes out, it's looking. It's looking for the laser spot. And uh, if that guy's already lasing and the missile's headed over, still behind him, it could be bouncing off of fog or high humidity or something like that, and the missile will track that. So you got to wait for it to really get over you. And then, um, yeah, then they put the laser on the target and uh, kill the target with that. Uh, so the other things we learned on the Apache, uh, it went to a 30 millimeter, um, 30 millimeter uh, high explosive dual purpose round. And uh, that's one of them right there. Uh, the real ones actually explode. The real ones will punch through four inches of steel and has a five meter kill radius like a hand grenade. So when you see all those uh, pictures or videos, I should say, where guys are dying, even though the bullet hit the ground next to them, but you see kind of like splatter, that's that bullet exploding like a grenade. Mm. We shoot them at 10 round bursts each. And uh, we can go out to 4,000 uh, or four kilometers on that one. And... Uh, hit somebody with that. Uh, the 30 millimeter gun, the Apache was made for that. So it, it, uh, it automatically dampened everything. So you didn't have to put the stick into it. It, it would, uh, it would move the helicopter backwards, but the fire control computer and the, uh, avionics and stuff, uh, keep it where you want it. And, uh, it compensates for the uh, recoil on the gun and such. Um, like I said, we went, got rid of the tow missile that the uh, Cobra shot because that was tube launched, optically sighted, wire guided missile. And that one, like I said, you put the crosshairs on the target. And now when the missile comes out, uh, the back of the tow missile has an infrared light. And the computer says, like, okay, you need to come left. You need to come right. You need to come left. You need to come right. And it's telling that through the wire that's spooling out on it. And, uh, until it hits the target. So that's how you keep that crosshair on there. With, like I said, with the Apache, you got the laser. You can laze, special forces can laze. A fast mover can laze for you. If they, as long as they have the right codes and you talk about it before you do it, that's how that works. Um, the other thing I really liked about the Apache was the, um, all the rockets we got to shoot. All the different types of rockets, I should say. Um, you know, your standard high explosive rockets, but the white phosphorus, and then you had the uh, uh, multi purpose sub munitions, which were kind of like a cluster bomb. So, in a rocket, this would be a high explosive rocket, but a, a multi purpose sub munition one, this would be full of these little cluster bombs, um, bomblets, so to speak. And uh, those would shoot out. You've already got the range in it, the rocket would shoot out to the area where the enemy was, and then it would blow its uh, nose off, and um, all these little parachute-type uh, submunitions would come on the ground and then land on the ground. And they also have like a 15-meter kill radius on their uh, explosion, and uh, it'll also punch through easily over four inches of steel. Uh, now, it won't, it won't kill a tank, stands a good chance of it because, you know, that's a thinner armor on the top of a tank. But if we're going to kill a tank, it's going to be using the Hellfire missile. That'll punch through easily 36 inches of steel. Any known armor in the world, that Hellfire missile will defeat.